Hey guys, it's Sammy coming at you from Under the Stairs Brewing Company and happy Homebrew Wednesday. I'm going to try and film this again a little bit more privately like last week and uh, film it on a Tuesday, see if I can do some editing tonight or tomorrow and get it posted at least on Wednesday at some point. So cheers. Halfway through, this was the Naughty Blonde Sauce Pot. She's turned into more of a, you can see, she's really yummy. Just finishing her off. In the keg there, as well as the uh, messy trousers, almost done, almost done. Got into a little bit of a messy trousers situation on, you know, Friday. You know, you're putting an extra kit together and trying to do the hop count and going uh, 60 uh, and then 20 and then. Oh, oh. Anyways, that being said, um, that was all a result of the West Coast IPA, which I'm now calling the Magic Spoon because I broke my mash spoon inside of the pot while I was stirring in the uh, dry malt extract. So you can just imagine there's my wife standing there with tongs and I'm sanitizing everything before she pulls it in and uh, so if it works out it'll be a fucking bloody miracle. Hence the name Magic Spoon IPA. Um, came in just a little under my, project my projected uh, starting gravity of 1.059. It came out at uh, 1.052. So in the ballpark and at the end of the day it's homebrew it's tasty I'm sure made the kit before it worked out just fine so it should be good excuse me long day um, further to that I put together my very first all grain kit um, from OBK those who watched me last week did, saw me do the unboxing of the two kits um, of my red ale um, did a brew in a bag with uh, with one of these in my uh, 20 liter kettle. Um, it's basically a five gallon uh, mesh bag I picked up from a large big box store. Um, and I think I kind of really mucked it up. I don't think I had enough water in there based on the size of my grain bill. Um, grain bill, I had six pounds of Canadian two row, three pounds and eight ounces of the Munich two, a uh, pound of the Kara Red, and then three ounces of the roasted barley. All with 15 liters of water, and the reason why I was only 15 liters of water is because that's all my kettle held. So uh, combine that and the single milling of the grains, which was my own fault. I didn't ask the guys at OBK to do that. Next time I will. And so my efficiency, um, my starting gravity was supposed to be uh, 1.054 based on a 75% mash efficiency with uh, six and a quarter gallons of uh, the pre-boil of well, the mash. Um, I measured. Uh, it came out to 1.030, which is way low, but it's been fermenting like mad since I pitched the yeast uh, late Sunday, well, early Sunday evening, about 8, 9 o'clock, Monday morning. It's just been going like gangbusters now without really slowing down. So I'm hoping that, I don't know, it's going to ferment out further past the final gravity of 1.012. I don't know. Either way, I'm really hoping it's going to give me a really nice tasting uh, session now, a little lower ABV. And if that's the case, that's the case. Um, like I said, it's home brewing. It's exciting. It's fun. It's something new to try. And um, if it works out, I'll be really, really pleased. And if it doesn't work out the way I want it to, then I'll try and try again. Um, so cheers to that. Because that being said, home brewing, at least to me, is about having fun trying new things, trying different things, and sharing with people. I don't really give a flying fig whether I'm supposed to have 7.8 liters of water for the mash heated up to a certain temperature to ensure proper brew house efficiency. If it works for you, it works for you. If it works for me, it works for me. I see a lot of people going on about you need to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Sure, great. If it works for you, fantastic. I don't have the space for a three kegel system I don't have the space or the money to buy a Blickman Tower of Power heating element controller. I don't have that. I use it with what I got. It was basically my four burner stove upstairs and something else in a little bit, which I'll expand upon. Um, the you know the courteousness of my swimbo, she who must be obeyed, um, allowing me to do it in the kitchen for the time being, um, and then doing this in the basement. So. For me, that's what works. So I'm just looking at getting into all grain brewing with uh, brew in the bag system 
and so far I think I'm on the right path. I think obviously if I increase the water volume and uh, get the mills grained a second time to increase my mash efficiency based on the lack of, cir lack of circulation that takes place in the bag and dial in the temperatures a little bit more, it's all a learning process and for me that's really what it's all about. So if it works out, mm. excuse me, awesome. And if it doesn't, <coughs> pardon me, it doesn't. No big deal. No skin off my back, no skin off my teeth. I'm sure I'll have a lovely tasting ale that is not going to knock me off my face, but it's going to give me a lovely, happy, warm, tingly feeling as I enjoy it on my back deck, watching my kids play and enjoying the summer. So that's all I have to say about that. Now, furthermore, um, I did purchase, to expand the brewing equipment a little bit, um, at a lovely Canadian Tire, another local large retailer. They had these 36 quart outdoor turkey fryer things on sale. So I picked one up for like 86 bucks before taxes. And the pot's fucking massive. So this is the gem right here. So it's 36 quarts or nine liters, or sorry, nine gallons. And made in, made in China. And you know what really cracks me up? Okay, so do not overfill with oil. And then number two, tum off bona if oil exceeds 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Tum off bona. Really. Someone couldn't go through and do a spell check before they put this in a box and sent it overseas. Anyways, it is made in China, but you know what? It's a very thin aluminum pot, and if I get a couple years out of it, great. If not, it's 80 bucks. Comes with all this lovely good stuff. Comes with the thermometer, comes with the reg, and all that stuff. Then it also comes with this, which kind of intrigued me a lot. So basically, this is what I'm going to be using for my... Uh, my boil, my brew in a bag. Uh, the uh, um, my malt and all my grains are going to go in here, and this is going to go into the kettle. And this did come with a 41,000 BTU uh, exterior burner, which I haven't fully put together yet. But that's the gem right there. So I think it will work quite nicely for what I'm going to be using it for. Um, this will allow me to do some more extensive all grain stuff outside without having to, uh, you know, offend my swimbo, even though she says that it doesn't really bother her that much, but deep down, you know, she's going, good Lord, she's more of a rum drinker, more of a vodka, palm bay, fruity, rooty, tooty, give her a, you know, umbrella and a pina colada thing, and yeah, that's not for me, but that's for her, so that's what works, so hey, whatever. Sorry about that. So we got that, we got that, we got that, we got that. Um, it's going to allow me to basically do a full brew in the bag uh, kit, for lack of a better term, or brew in the bag style of brewing. Uh, that's going to allow me, I think, to really increase my efficiency. I mean, I want to be sitting at about 75% efficiency if I can. I mean, honest, I didn't really get into the, the maths, the maths for figuring out uh, the efficiency on this, but. If it's a little bit lower, but to me, honestly, as long as it tastes good, that's really all that matters. Now, speaking of something that tastes good, um, I was so surprised. Um, buddy Nick and I have been uh, egging each other on to do a, a hop cider through uh, my good friend Big CQ01 uh, over in Scotland who, who did one. So I did a one gallon test batch with some Cascade hops, and it tastes bloody incredible. I was so surprised. And you can see her just tucked in the back there. Uh, yeah, next to Lucille. So one gallon of uh, apple cider with a half an ounce of Cascade hops added to the primary. And I racked it uh, last night I had a little sample, a little wee nip, just to see how things were tasting. And I used the, the champagne yeast, fermented it right out, and it's sitting at uh, 7.2 ABV right now. It knocked, to the, uh, knocked the final gravity down to 1, 1.000 even. So it may come down a little bit more, but I mean, honestly, finished clean and just lovely. So uh, a little bit of apple up front, and the, well, actually a little bit of a hops on the nose, and because of the cask, being a little citrusy, 
complimented the apple quite nicely. I was really, really surprised. So that is going to be a five-gallon batch for sure. Just got to figure out, you know, when I'm going to do it and whatnot. But the trick that I'm going to have to come up with and talk to you guys about is um, carbonating. In terms of how to carbonate, whether I even want to carbonate going from there. So um, that's where we are for now. And give me one second. got to deal with the kids. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a uh, quick couple little snippets of the uh, brew in the bag uh, with the batch from OBK and uh, just take a look at it let me know what you think I mean seeing as my first time I'm quite sure that the uh, water volume needs to get up there and the double milling as well so I'm gonna uh, put that up there just take a look at it let me know what you think and then uh, yeah I'd love to hear from you so thanks so we're currently sitting at, uh, for mashing, it's 153 degrees Fahrenheit. We've been mashing for an hour now, and she looks really good. I'm actually going to take a, uh, give her a stir. I'm going to mash her in for another 15 minutes and just see sort of how we are before I uh, pull it off and go from there. So uh, that's where we're at. And then, uh, and then from there, uh, we'll start with our boil hop additions and we'll sparge it and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, apologize for the uh, Justin Bieber in the background. I got my seven year old daughter now playing Justin Bieber. It's driving me nuts. I've switched on to the uh, messy trousers to help me get through the day. So I've got this, I uh, mashed it in for 90 minutes. I sparged with about uh, three and a half liters of water at 170 degrees. Now I'm just bringing it up to the boil and waiting for the hot break. This is my first batch of all grain beer. Love you guys to chime in and let me know if uh, this looks normal or not. I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, so uh, I guess what I'll do as soon as we get into the boil, we'll start with our hops. I got an ounce of Cascade at 60 minutes, and then I got two ounces. Of Centennial at five minutes left in the boil. Then I'll add my uh, Warflock clarifying, clarifying tablet and then we'll go from there and I'll uh, update you with you guys on a uh, gravity reading. So hoping that it well with you and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks guys. Take care. All right, lads, ladies, whatever else may be watching, whoever else may be watching, cheers. So, if you do me a favor, take a look at what you saw. Let me know what you think. Love to get some feedback from you. Um, well, that's really about all I got for now. So I won't be doing a match, a batch of beer probably for the next couple of weeks. Um, I usually try and do maybe two a month and go from there. Um, as you can tell by my physique, two is probably plenty. Anyways. Um, Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, cheers to Neil and cheers to Nick and cheers to everybody who's chimed in and everybody who's subscribed to me. I really, really appreciate the followers. I'm up to like 20 followers now, which is like a mint. Um, 208 odd views, which is more than what I thought we'd be up to right now. So this is really, really exciting. And all honestly, it's all about homebrewing and having fun and uh, doing what works for you and sharing that information with other people. I'm... Uh, uh, trust me, I'm not a by the book kind of guy. I uh, do what works and I enjoy doing it. Um, <clears throat> and those of you who like that, great. Uh, those of you who prefer to stick, trick and stick and follow a specific regimen or regimen, as one might say, good for you. That's great. I love that the fact that it works for you. Um, I'm dealing with what I got. I'm dealing with. My lovely wife upstairs, my two beautiful girls, and my dog Spence in our kitchen, and now dealing with uh, the outside burner. So, small steps, baby steps. And those of you guys just getting into home brewing, I mean, keep doing what you're doing. It's all about learning and it's all about fun and just being a sponge and absorbing as much as you can, asking questions. It's a really small community, guys. It's a huge community, but really, really small. People want to help and want to want to give you as much information. Um, it's a learning curve. Some may call it steep, some may call it not so steep, or gradual, or gradual, if you will. Um, 
I myself did mostly extract kits, like from cans. Your cans were almost basically about a year and a half before I started getting into this. Um, and now I'm making, I'm not going to say mistakes, I'm not going to say making errors. I'm learning all grain. Um, you want to jump in and do all grain right away? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. And honestly, love to hear the love to hear um, your adventures in homebrew because it's an adventure. It's uh, it's fun. Um, I love what I do. I excuse me. Love the fact that I can come home, check on the children, as my wife calls them, every night. I see how they're doing, and I give you guys updates and see how they are. So that's really about all I got. And those of you who like to follow Strict Regimen. Good. Great. Perfect. I kind of like to mix things up a little bit. And if it works out, awesome. If it doesn't, eh, it is what it is. So, uh, uh, it's an adventure. It's, uh, it's a one step at a time thing. So, if you guys will excuse me, I'm going to go uh, give Lucille a bit of a tap and uh, see if I can coax some Naughty Blonde sauce pot out of one of her lovely chrome spouts. Take that as you will. Um, so from Under the Stairs Brewing Company, this is Sam saying, Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Saying cheers, saying prost, saying slancha. And more importantly, staying, saying be safe and be happy doing whatever it is that you guys are doing. So all the best from me, my family, to yours. And hopefully we'll all get together at some point and share a pint. So take care, everybody, and all the best. Lucille, daddy's coming home. Take care, everybody. Cheers.